Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Joanne and I live in the land down under. Uh, to all of my subscribers and members, welcome and thank you for joining me. So we've been following the Australian politician, Christian Porter, who sued the ABC for defamation. And it sort of took a slight turn because then there was action that the barrister that was representing him couldn't actually uh, represent him because of a conflict of interest with <laughs> with a friend. She was a friend of the alleged victim and she'd had a conversation with his barrister. Um, I managed to watch quite a bit of the hearing and there was closed court, open court, closed court, open court. Anyway, that was resolved on Thursday. And there was a whole lot of stuff that happened uh, as far as craziness. So this is like there's been all these orders. So essentially the order that was made, the, the one that we really want to pay attention to, is that it was deemed that there was a conflict of interest and that she could no longer act. So the Guardian has reported and in fact all the media outlets are reporting that because his barrister has to stand aside that now uh, he has agreed to go into mediation now the interesting thing is is that his case is due for a pre-trial conference starting the first of june so we'll have a look in a minute to see what documents have been filed in there but the judge ruled that his barrister would have to stand aside. He said in the ruling that she would have to relinquish the brief because she had received confidential information which was relevant to the case and could present a danger of misuse. I've concluded there is a danger of misuse of confidential information received by Ms. Kuthansu. The ruling came just after Revelations Porter and the ABC had agreed to enter mediation. A step which, although routine in most defamation cases, could potentially see the parties avoiding a trial. So he, there was an urgent four-day hearing. It was actually supposed to be three days. They actually had three days booked. It was supposed to be finished Wednesday, but it didn't actually finish until Thursday because it just went on and on and on. So it came about because uh, Joe Dyer, who was a debater with Porter's accuser in the late 80s, so she should not be, the barrister with that, she should not be allowed to act over what she said was a conflict of interest arising from a meeting between the two women. The meeting which took place regarded an article in the Australian newspaper about the ABC Four Corners program, in which she appeared and happened after a friend of Chris Anthony's fellow barrister, Matthew Richardson, asked her advice about a concerns notice. She did not make any submissions in the case, but a but appearing on behalf of lawyers for Porter, argued that she did not recall receiving any confidential information at the meeting and any information had subsequently become public. So, as I said, there was there was close court, open court. The judge, um, Justice Thornley, actually did a whole, did, um, a whole lot of his reasonings and uh, in close court and there's still a lot that has not been made public about this. The judge said he agreed with Dyer that the barrister was given information at the meeting which was confidential and has remained confidential since, which is why they had to keep clearing the court if they were going to talk about it. While he accepted that Porter may suffer prejudice as a result of her removal, given her experience, expertise and the time she'd already spent on the case, he noted that the a former Attorney General was well aware there might be difficulty in acting for him for some time and was able to brief another silk. A fair-minded person of the public would say Ms. Kuthanthu should not act for Porter. Um, so Mr Porter wishes to thank Ms. Kuthanthu for her efforts. She's an outstanding, dedicated lawyer, a true leader in the field. Um, and so she made a statement to say that she was... Um, very pleased and relieved that the case has come to an end. This was dire. Um, so also, I mean, there were a couple of things that came out in this 
in this thing, and I actually watched this part. I actually watched Chris Anthony's cross examination. Um, she said that she had been warned by several people not to take the case because it could end badly. Um, and that she had also uh, she had also worked on the submissions that Polder had made in that case. The ABC has made a statement, mediations are very common in defamation matters and it is important that all litigant parties seek to explore potential resolution options when they can, especially so for the ABC as a model litigant. So, <laughs> um, so that was... That was that matter. So if we go back and have a look, so all of those orders up there. So if we go to Porter and the ABC, um, we've got another lot of orders because again, they were supposed to have been, um, they were supposed to have met on Wednesday and then they were due to meet Thursday. So the judges had to make all these types of orders. So this is an order recording, um, putting in place the fact that you can't record it. Uh, that you can't take any video links, any photos. It says, however, shall nothing in this order shall prevent based on what or he or she has seen or heard during the hearing making his own notes or recordings of the, or publishing a fair report of the proceeding or records, yeah. So you can watch and you can make notes and you can report. So this isn't another order. So no order in the court in this proceeding prevents parties from providing unredacted versions of the defence and reply to any mediator appointed by parties in connection with mediation. So because of, because of the public interest case and because the other case is linked, there's some stuff that's got to be uh, privated. So the, the, the judge has sort of, um, her, Justice Jagger has actually said that the mediators can get the unredacted copies. So this is um, the interlocutory application filed on the 11th of May be adjourned, adjourned until 9.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 1st of June. So 1st of June is the next time we're due in court and maybe we will get told that there is a, uh, maybe we will find out that there has been mediation or a settlement but that's all happening now so there's so much happening but this case was was delayed until the other one was resolved so don't forget if for this case to proceed he has to actually have another barrister or another silk as they're called uh to take on the case and yeah, so it just got really messy really quickly. Uh, so the first matter's been resolved. Now they're looking to resolve the second matter. And 1st of June, now that I'm in lockdown, I will be there. <laughs> so I will be taking notes. I'll be watching. Um, it's just like a TV. It's just like, um, it's actually just like watching a live stream. Nobody knows that I'm watching. It's just like watching the TV. So, and as long as there's, I don't take any photos, or, or record any of it, we're fine. So thank you all. So that's a really quick update on everything that's preceded. We've got lots of other stuff happening. We've got a YouTube comedian being sued by another politician. Politicians like suing people <laughs> uh, that we're going to try and pick up the case for. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And I hope you just have a really amazing day.